All right, here's an update of the RPG toolkit, RPG engine toolkit so far. Um, the first thing that I've updated is the actual building generator. I've added a few different props to it. I've also tried to update the speed that it takes to simulate a building try to bake down a little bit better um i haven't added it yet but i've been testing out the ability to add more smart props mainly for things like lights and things like that that you need to light your area so that way it can be something that is configurable in a blueprint and that way you can change it in one place and then as you generate your buildings all your lighting is already set at least for general lighting um, when it spawns there's still indep independent blueprints like this door right here so you can come in make modifications to this individual blueprint say if you want the lights in this area to be different settings and things like that um, also for doors if you want do certain doors to be locked or whatever until you get a certain access key or whatever um, The other thing is, I've added NPC, kind of an NPC generation from template sets. So you can have a different template set for an NPC type. So you can have male, female, kids, um, elderly, whatever. And you can actually use that to generate, you can put that into a NPC list. You can actually generate random NPCs from different parts, clothing, things like that. Apply color, um, color tint to your clothing based off of a color mask. So if you only wanted a certain part of the actual clothing to change color, you would implement a mask with that. And then this tool will be able to tell what needs to be colored what color. Um, Outside of that, if I can go this way, I might just put it here. All right, so we're about to have an actual live test of this because bugs don't happen at all, ever. So let's see if I can find the content browser. Bug number one, can't find content browser. All right, I'm going to open a new content browser. So if I go down to the plugin, I should be able to go down to blueprints, props, and then I have a crowd spawner. There we go. With my crowd spawner, I have the ability to there we go. Oh, it's too close. I have the ability to pick the actual area that I want to spawn crowds in and how many people to a crowd that I want to actually spawn. Um there's one instance in here that I, one thing that I have in here is the ability to remove NPCs from an area as you move away. This helps for the performance and helps with the limitations that you have for actually spawning AI characters. And for some reason I can't duplicate this blueprint, but okay. I'll just pop another one inside the building. See how well this works. I'm going to decrease the radius. All right, that should be good. Five or ten people. So if you see here, you can control the spawn radius, the min and maximum number of NPCs for the area the wandering radius of the NPC 
And the activation and deactivation radius is pretty much how far away from the origin the origin spawner do you have to be before it starts to piece by piece remove all the NPCs that is that is responsible for generating. One thing that I'm going to add eventually is the ability to put the NPC back to the exact same position of the despawn area. This is mainly I'm going to use this mainly for monster placement so that way if you leave an area where you have just random monsters that you haven't killed when you come back to that area the monster should be in the same should come back to the same relative spot where it was before um and i'm also going to have for the monsters so if you kill them they won't come back for an end amount of time this will actually be controlled by the monster spawner to help be able to have a little subsystem to control that and monitor and manage its own monsters that it spawns. Outside of this, you can have individual monsters, so that way you can have a specific monster for like pathing, things like that. And also you can have just random monsters that will spawn and populate an area. Ones that you don't really care about the certain placement and things for. Uh, So if I hit play, for some reason Tori is incredibly small. Okay bug number one. I just updated my animation so that's probably why he's really 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 tiny with this little fist of steel. Alright, um, so as we can see we have NPCs running around. None of my furniture has collision so that's why they're walking through everything. Uh, let me see if I can go through this little door. So I have the outside NPCs. They're walking around. Ignore the flickering trees. I still haven't figured out why these trees are flickering. While I'm here, if this can even be seen, I've added weapon equips to the actual characters as well as modular, modular clothing. So it might be easier if I just switch to Mika. The, the weapons and armor are loaded from the database. It supports, I tried to make it as modular as possible, so your arm, your weapon information is inside of another blueprint that tells you its mount position and its, uh, its sheathed position and its mount position when you actually equip it. So if you switch to um, attack mode, they will be equipped to the right positions, even though my one of the swords is upside down, but again, bugs are a thing and they happen. Uh, if I go into the menu, let me see if I can make this bigger. If I go into the menu, we have I have it to where you can go to go through and select your characters. And since Tori is too small, let's switch to Mika. And for some reason, her weapons are huge in this men in this menu, but not here. Okay, bugs happen. They're a thing. All right, so. I have it now to where you can come in here, you can equip weapons or unequip weapons. So I can remove the weapon. It shows up in my inventory after I remove them. My stats is updating appropriately for the things that I unequip. And I have the character the character viewport I cannot get it to animate whatsoever outside of uh, outside of the game being paused well while the game is paused so pretty much I've tried a lot of different things and I wanted to have the character be able to be movable while in here but if the game is actually paused it will not forward any animations to the window but at least I got it to where I can actually put the characters in the window 
Um, and update their armor when you change their armor type. So, the other thing I have is the, the item inventory. These are the weapons. These are the armor that I unequipped. I can drop them if I want. I have the filter for quest items, for weapons, for armor, battle only items. I can actually show that if I come out and go to the store. Just buy all the things. So now if I go over to battle items, I have these items with their item icon that's being queried from the database. And if I have any usable items that I can use out of battle, they'll show up here in the usable items. And one of the last things that I have is the hex map. And I made this because I have I don't have the artistic ability to hand draw an entire map to be able to keep centered to the screen to be able to update things for where the player is. So I created this, which is pretty much, it's kind of like a height map, a hex grid height map for your area. So I can zoom in, I can zoom out. If I move around, I can, it will do a scan when I'm in the actual map window that will go out and scan the area and give you a height representation of the items that's in the area within the scan radius. Um, it will update your... I have color filtering for given objects that I want to be certain color. So I've set it for buildings to be blue, for any mesh that's not a building to be gray with the standard height map information, and then terrain to actually color based on the slope. So I can have the brown for the flatlands, the green for the forest area, and then the darker gray for the actual steep steep mountain hills for the actual terrain. And I think that's about it for all the new stuff that I have so far. I'm actually almost I'm close to being done. Um, of course, I have a lot of polishing to do, and the last thing that I'm actually going to be working on is the battle system. Hopefully, that will come out pretty as well as it is in my head. Hopefully, everything will work how I want it to work, and I'm trying to keep everything modular as possible for anybody with any type of idea to be able to do what they need to do with the system. So flexibility is my main thing so I'm gonna to try to keep everything as flexible as possible for people to use this tool to be able to make whatever ideas that they actually want like I said before all the source code is going to be included anyway so if you want to make code changes you can make code changes if you want to stay on the blueprint side you can do that as well but everything will be here for you so until next time